Namaste. Thank you for joining us here on SLG Hello Doctors 31st episode. CABG or heart bypass surgery as we know it remains the most common cardiac surgery performed across the world today. Its storied history, ripe with successes and failures that led to more innovation, can be traced back to more than a century. Its rapid advancement has been made possible by pioneering research and practice over decades. Our guest speaker today, Dr. G. Sudhir, consultant cardiothoracic and vascular surgeon at SLG Hospitals Hyderabad, will take us through the details of heart bypass surgery in this episode. Welcome Dr. Sudhir to SLG Hello Doctor. We are so glad to have you here with us today. Yeah, thank you. I'm also glad to have to be part of this Hello Doctor program and I am eagerly waiting to clarify the doubts of the patients who are undergoing this coronary artery bypass surgery. Sure. So, shall we begin? Yeah, sure. Let's start. Doctor, first off, when is a patient advised to undergo bypass surgery? That's a nice question. Usually, the patient will be coming to the hospital with complaints of either chest pain or shortness of breath, uh, that is feeling difficulty in taking respiration. When this patient present to the hospital, the cardiologist initially evaluates the patient with coronary angiogram and then uh, he will decide about the uh, procedure he has to undergo further. It totally depends on the coronary artery anatomy and also degree of blockage in each artery. After looking into the, if it is a minimal block, the patient can be managed with the medical management. If it is one or two lesions that are easily accessible for angioplasty, the patient can be stunted for the coronary artery disease. If it is multiple vessel blocks and multiple blockages are there and critical blockages are there, it is always advised for the coronary artery bypass surgery. Doctor, how do you do bypass surgery? Uh, it's a technical question. Actually, in the olden days, the bypass surgery is done taking the support of a cardiopulmonary bypass. It's a, a machine that actually takes over the function of the heart and the heart is rested. With the rested in heart, we do the bypass surgeries. We usually take either arterial conduit or venous conduit and do a bypass. It's like similar to the creating a bypass for a city which is having high traffic. Suppose if there is a traffic in the city, how we will creating a bypass to overcome the traffic? In a similar way, if the arteries of the heart got blocked, we will be doing a bypass surgery, bypassing the blockage. So, we will be giving a connection proximally to the blockage and distally after the blockage. That is how we do a bypass surgery. For doing this, we will be using different kinds of conduits namely arterial conduits and venous conduits. With the recent advances, we are doing only beating heart surgeries as a part of bypass grafting. So doctor, that brings me to the very interesting question. What is beating heart surgery? As I said earlier, earlier days we are using cardiopulmonary bypass for doing this bypass surgery. While using the cardiopulmonary bypass, the heart will be taking rest on the machine. The machine will be supporting the entire body and we will be doing this bypass surgery. But with this recent advances, we are doing only beating heart surgery. That means the machine is not connected. It is just kept as a standby in the operation theater and if at all needed, we will be using the cardiopulmonary bypass machine. Otherwise, we will not be using. With the heart beating every beat, every second, we will be doing the grafting. That is how we will be avoiding the, all the side effects caused by the cardiopulmonary bypass machine. Doctor, earlier on you mentioned arterial bypass and venous bypass. So, can we understand about them and can you tell us first about what is total arterial bypass surgery? Total arterial bypass surgery is the surgery done where all the grafts like in the heart will be having three main blood vessels. All the main blood vessels are bypassed with using an arterial condo. Usually internal mammary artery, it is present on both sides, right side and left side both internal memory arteries, radial artery, it is present in the hand, the radial artery and inferior epigastric artery and gastroepiploic artery, these are all the arterial conduits. Using these arterial conduits, if you do a bypass surgery, it is called as a total arterial bypass surgery. Doctor, when is total arterial bypass surgery recommended for a patient? Under what circumstances? Total arterial bypass surgery is done 
for any kind of patient but particularly it should be highly recommended in patient who are very young patient undergoing this bypass surgery the main initiative motto behind this total arterial bypass grafting is the graft patency is longer with this graft patency longer the patient will be having longer life for the arterial conduits these arterial conduits can be used either in single or in sequencing when we are using both internal memory arteries it can be used like sequential like from one artery to the other artery we can do two anastomoses at a point or we can be making a t junction or y junction and we'll be doing or grafting to all our other arteries as sequencing this is called as total arterial bypass grafting doctor let's now move to the other option which is venous grafting what is venous grafting venous grafting is the bypass grafting done using the veins from the lower limbs and from the hand usually great saphenous vein and short saphenous vein from the lower limb and the cephalic vein from the upper limb we used to do this bypass grafting when these grafts are used for doing bypass grafting this venous grafting that's what we call routinely left internal memory artery is used it is an arterial graft it is used for grafting the lad that is left anterior descending artery it is one of the major artery in the heart it is used to for bypassing the lad and the other two arteries that is circumflex and it branches oms obtuse marginals what we call oms and right coronary artery and it branches into pda and plb that is posterior descending artery and posterior left ventricular artery when we are using grafting for this we use venous graft for bypassing this this is the routine commonly done procedure it's break time on slg hello doctor prapancha stai multi super speciality hospital slg hospitals నాలుగు ఎకరాల సువిశాల ప్రాంగణంలో తొమ్మిది వందల తొంభై తొమ్మిది బెడ్ల సౌకర్యంతో గ్లోబల్ జేసీఐ అండ్ ఎన్ఏబి హెచ్ ప్రమాణాలతో అనుభాగ్నులైన వైద్య నిపుణులతో అత్యంత క్లిష్టమైన గుండె సమస్యలకు శస్త్రచికిత్సలు చేయబడును మెదడు మరియు నరాల సంబంధిత సమస్యలకు మొట్టమొదటిగా న్యూరో నావిగేషన్ టెక్నాలజీతో చికిత్స క్యాన్సర్ చికిత్స కోసం లీనాక్ వంటి అత్యాధునిక వైద్య పరికరాలతో చికిత్స కీళ్ల నొప్పులు ఎముకలకు సంబంధించిన సమస్యలకు మరియు జీర్ణకోశ సంబంధిత వ్యాధులకు మెరుగైన వైద్యం అందించబడును ఇరవై అత్యాధునిక ఆపరేషన్ థియేటర్లు రెండు వందలు ఐసీయూ బెడ్స్ అత్యాధునిక డయాలసిస్ సదుపాయం కలదు ఇరవై నాలుగు గంటలు ఎమర్జెన్సీ డయాగ్నోస్టిక్ ఫార్మసీ సేవలు త్రీ టెస్ట్ల ఎంఆర్ఐ సిటీ స్కాన్ వంటి అత్యాధునిక వైద్య పరికరాలతో మరింత మెరుగైన సంరక్షణకు మీ ఎంపిక ఎస్ఎల్జీ హాస్పిటల్స్ నిజాం పేట్రోడ్ బాజుపల్లి హైదరాబాద్ సెల్ నెంబర్స్ నైన్ వన్ ట్రిపుల్ త్రీ త్రీ నైన్ ఫైవ్ డబల్ జీరో ఫోన్ నెంబర్స్ నైన్ వన్ ఫోర్ జీరో టూ త్రీ సెవెన్ ఎయిట్ ఫైవ్ సిక్స్ సెవెన్ ఎయిట్ మరియు ఫోర్ ఎయిట్ ఫైవ్ టూ ఫైవ్ సిక్స్ సెవెన్ ఎయిట్ టోల్ ఫ్రీ నెంబర్ వన్ ఎయిట్ డబల్ జీరో ఫైవ్ డబల్ నైన్ టూ జీరో టూ జీరో ఎమర్జెన్సీ డబల్ సెవెన్ డబల్ నైన్ టూ త్రీ ఫైవ్ సిక్స్ సెవెన్ ఎయిట్ ఆంధ్ర ఆరోగ్యశ్రీ సదుపాయం కూడా కలదు వెల్కమ్ బ్యాక్ టు ఎస్ఎల్జీ హెలో డాక్టర్ వెర్ విఆర్ ఇన్ కాన్వర్సేషన్ విత్ డాక్టర్ సుధీర్ consultant cardiothoracic and vascular surgeon at SLG Hospitals Hyderabad and we are talking to him about heart bypass surgery so doctor we have understood about arterial grafting and venous grafting so what are the pros and cons of each of these and comparatively how do you decide which one to recommend for a patient usually we will take arterial graft from the left internal memory artery and right internal memory artery arterial grafts are usually recommended younger patient for a better patency rate and the drawback with using with the arterial graft is the sternal wound healing because while doing the surgeries we will be cutting the sternal bone that is the bone of the chest which we will be cutting the healing process will be difficult because we are removing the artery and we are using it for doing the bypass so for morbid obese patient and patient with uncontrolled diabetes the chances of getting infection and wound healing will be poor in such type of patient both arterial grafts are not recommended in those cases we can use radial artery from the hand but even for the radial artery there should be throw from the elbow to the hand will be compromised with the ulnar artery we have to cross check whether there is a complete patency of both the arteries or not before going ahead with the radial artery arterial grafts have some pros and some cons similarly venous grafts venous grafts are available in all the patient 
but they might be patients who is having varicose veins and other venous problems where the veins are not useful for doing this bypass graft in such patients arterial grafts are used most of the study showed arterial graft patency of 90 to 95% at the end of 5 years follow up and venous graft patency of 85 to 90% at the end of 5 years follow up so doctor all this sounds pretty scientific to put it simply what are the complications that patients should expect from heart bypass surgery bypass surgery is a major surgery that a person is undergoing in the current day the complications of bypass surgery includes major complications and also minor complications heart is the only organ that is supplying blood to entire organs of the body all the organs in the body are supplied by the heart so any fluctuations in the blood pressure heart rate during the surgery will drastically affect other organs of the body so any organ can be affected with bypass surgery but the rate of complications is very minimal the major serious complications includes acute renal failure or pneumonia deep sternal infections arrhythmias leading to death minor complications include superficial wound infections fevers and unexplained uh, weaknesses for the few days after surgery doctor so post operative after maybe a couple of years is there a possibility that the person will develop chest pain again and in that case can bypass surgery be done again on the same patient a person after undergoing bypass he will be doing bypass grafting to the major blood vessels in the heart the minor branches and micro circulation branches are not bypassed these minor branches before becoming into capillaries will divide into 14 times the branches and branches up to 14 times all these branches are not bypassed during the bypass surgery only the major vessel that is visible and good size caliber one will be doing the bypass so after bypass the micro circulation can undergo thrombosis or occlusion leading to the chest pain of the patient after surgery if the patient develops chest pain after few years we have to recheck with the angiogram and look into the cause that is causing the chest pain if there is an occlusion of the artery or the graft depending upon the situation of the patient we can either undertake him for the redo surgery or we can plan for a stent in case the stenting is possible for doing that highly obliged dr sudhir for taking us through what is bypass surgery which is a procedure that uh, is happening in so many families across the world so i'm sure our viewers would have taken back a lot of value from this thank you so much yeah thank you thank you for uh, inviting me here and uh, i hope all the viewers will get some information about the surgery and also they might be getting clarified of the doubts they have and the inhibitions they have before asking before going and asking for the doctor thank you thank you we'll see you back here in 2 weeks from now until then stay safe enjoy responsibly namaste viewers hope you've hit the bell icon and are following all that's happening on SLG Hello Doctor if not do it right away